Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. We're here at the Magic Door Studios in Balbriggan. Uh, if you haven't checked them out, check them out on social media. But we're here for the match preview. I'm joined by Tom Healy and we're here to discuss Republic of Ireland versus Finland tomorrow evening. How are you feeling? I'm looking forward to it, especially after, you know, I'd say a positive couple of performances in the last time out. Uh, obviously a win against Finland and then... A loss to Greece, but definitely a lot of encouragement to take from that performance, especially defensively. Uh, I think this Finland game, as much as we have to respect them and you know take them seriously going in, uh, there's no excuses going in. It's a must win, especially being at home. And uh, I think we're more than capable with the squad that we have to go out and get three points. Yeah, well, that's that's kind of how I feel about it too. Like I'm, I, I know previously i said i think we should be beating the likes of finland that they, they're not the nation they were a few years ago when puki was in form playing for norwich and he was scoring their goals and stuff like that like they when we played them last time out we gifted them the goal other than that they weren't you know they had a little bit of pressure obviously when they brought on subs in, in, in the second half but ultimately when we brought on our subs that's when we won the game and i think as you said there like overall our squad should be stronger than theirs and in reality we should be beating these like it, it should be three points they have to try and come out and get a victory um to not finish bottom of the group so they have a bit more to kind of come out and try and play for more than us but um we'll be looking to win the game anyway because how many nations league games have we won like over the last number of years probably about four games three or four games and uh you know it's it's not good enough uh, you know we need to get our record better Um, you spoke about kind of greece greece the top of the group with four wins from four and beating england so greece aren't a bad side so there's no humiliation in losing to greece we put out a good performance a much better performance against greece than we did previously in the last campaign so i'm i'm optimistic going into this game yeah definitely like you said i think we're more than capable with the squad that we have i know even though we have a couple of injuries and key positions where i know we'll come on to it but it'd be interesting to see how heimer decides to change that squad uh, because there's a couple of players who are, you know, key to the starting eleven. Particularly, I'm thinking of Robbie Brady and Fe and uh, sorry, Chidozi or Benny. Uh, it'll be interesting to see who comes in and replaces them in the starting eleven. Uh, either way, though, no matter what he does there, I think we should be more than capable to beat Finland. I think, as you said, they definitely put it up to us a little bit more in the first half. Uh, but you know, individual mistakes was kind of the team of the last couple of windows. I know. Uh, Collins and Kelleher in particular cost us a couple of goals uh, not you know, an indictment to them as players I thought they were brilliant other than that but I think if we can cut that out of our game I think we put ourselves in a really good position to go out and get all three points and you know, at least put up a better performance in you know, what we did in the last game I thought we, we kind of scraped by in, in the second half with sort of uh, the performance of our subs they made a huge impact but Let's go out and actually put our foot down from the first minute and have a really good performance at home against a team that we should really be better than. Yeah, I I also think it's been a while since we had the Aviva rocking for a fixture. I, I, we did for the England game, but as soon as himself scored that goal, uh, you know, we we ultimately the, the the crowd was never recovered um so we can get some some similar sort of atmosphere it'd be interesting to see if uh you know you spoke about injuries but it'd be interesting to see if maybe mark mcginnis he's been called up now um jake o'brien matt doherty obviously coming back as well uh festy and darrow shea apparently carry knox according to hamer today so i'd likely say that they probably won't play against finland but may come back in for the england game who knows but that's going to be a real um, tricky one the, the the right side because of obviously Chido, Chidozi's pace not having Festi then who does actually kind of come in on on that side I mean you've got the trickery of a Mikey Johnson he can play on either side there um, but in terms of our out and out wingers like there's not too many you think I know Jason Knight's kind of filled in there on occasions as well in the past as like a right winger and stuff like that so kind of thinking you know who who actually would come in on that right hand side would Smodix do a job there and he goes with Ferguson and Parrot up front or Parrot maybe out and uh, you know why so does he go with that again a four again um Darrow Shea obviously had played right back for him you know is Darrow Shea going to be okay to play finish the game with Spurs but will he be, be back in at right back there um or would that be too disrespectful to Mr Matt Doherty yeah, there might be a bit of a, you know, sort of comfortability factor with Matt Doherty being a more senior player, you know, 
putting him straight in at right back rather than trying someone else new. Uh, I could definitely see that and wouldn't be surprised if that happens. Uh, as far as the wingers go, uh, I think you mentioned that I could easily see Smodic playing out on the right and that's assuming if Johnston is on the left and definitely I'd be comfortable enough with Parrott and Ferguson up front. I think that's you know more than enough going forward. Uh, definitely at the back, I thought uh, we kind of found a little bit of stability there with Darrow O'Shea playing right back, uh, especially with Collins and Scales in the centre. Uh, left back could be interesting. No Robbie Brady, obviously. Ryan Manning brought in. I could probably, I'd more likely see Cal Modell than maybe slot yeah. in there. Uh, and look, it's not too much of a downgrade. I know Robbie Brady did play very well uh, in the last couple of games. He was a very important player. As much as I didn't think he would be, he ended up being very crucial in both of them games. Uh, but Cal Odell, the very experienced player at international level, I'd say could do a job there. Yeah, and I think that's... Um, it, it's time p- players like Odell have stepped up. And, and like he, last time we played Greece, he was found out at left-back. So um, we're not blessed with, uh, I suppose players at left back i do know ryan manning was uh was taken off tactically at the weekend so he's not actually carrying a knock so he could potentially play um which i i'd actually rather see him there because he's a natural i'd natural like to left. see him yeah uh, i think he's an, a natural left back to be honest with you so i think it makes more sense for the balance of the team to put him in there does he go with a right back then i think he should probably go with matt doherty on this occasion i know fans will probably disagree with that but um i think a lot's being made of this Matt Doherty thing because there's just been nothing to talk about. There's just been a, a real kind of over-the-top I hate you Matt Doherty thing. And, you know, he's always turned, like he's always turned up to play for Ireland. He's never refused call-ups and stuff like that. Um, I interviewed him a few years ago and like spoke to him and, and you know, the, the way he spoke about playing for Ireland, it seemed to me like it was everything that he wanted to do and he was trying to bring that to the next generation. Um, so I just I just don't get the whole like Matt Doherty agenda that everybody seems to have. Like I'm not close to him in any way, shape, or form. I do think looking back on some of the highlights, yes, okay, maybe he's looked half arsed in those situations, but I don't think he's come out and done something or you know murdered someone the way some of the treatment he's been getting or like the the hatred towards him. Um, you know, it seems quite personal more than anything else. I agree. I think it's it's kind of a general sentiment around a lot of Ireland fans of wanting to kind of turn the page from the last era of Irish football he's kind of a symbol of that a player who was you know really good and broke through a club level and just never really as you say he turned up and obviously tried his best in most games for Ireland but never really lived up to the kind yeah, of never showed the form club form yeah yeah which I know a lot of people were excited to see especially how good he was those couple of years at Wolves getting his move to Spurs um I think maybe less so of a Matt Doherty but more of a uh as I say, turning the page from the last era and wanted to see this new generation of player come true. Uh, a player like Festi Ebiselli behind him, I think there was a lot of excitement around that and kind of seeing this new generation of players come true from a really talented uh, underage setup that we had building for quite a while. And you are seeing that translate into a lot of the rest of the areas of the team. Obviously, uh, Cal- or sorry, Evan Ferguson, Liam Scales, uh, Nathan Collins, Bill Holder, but you know, wanting to see these newer generation of players come through and see them succeed rather than turn into the kind of old guard which had let us down in the past. Yeah, I suppose uh, kind of one player we probably did, like I'm thinking of that probably didn't play that well against Finland was Finn Azad, just coming off the back of a really good week with Middlesbrough. I think he got two goals and an assist and, and one really good goal we actually posted on Instagram. But um, there's him, uh, Andy Moran's carrying a bit of a knock, but. Sammy Smolix is in good uh, good form. Troy's been in good form this this uh, season. Finn Azaz now is in good form. Liam Scales, we want to keep up that good trend of uh, good performance alongside Nathan Collins. Whether uh, Mark McGuinness plays, I'm not so sure. Um, we don't actually have too many right back options there. I'm just looking at the the squad there. Festy obviously would have been an option there. Um, and obviously Matt Doherty. So I think Matt Doherty will likely start. Um, Jake O'Brien, I can't see... I can't see him getting into the team just purely because he's not playing at uh, Everton. So I just don't think it's un- unfortunate. He's been unfortunate. I've seen today that there's reports linking him with them um, moved back to France uh, in January. I actually think that would be beneficial for him, but the club don't want to let him go. Apparently he's impressing in training. So we'll wait and see. That was, that was according to the athletic uh, Patrick Boyle and was saying that earlier. So um, I think 
with with Jake, he just needs game time. We know he's good enough, but he just needs game time. And I think all the other lads are playing ahead of him at the moment. So you, you can't really say that he deserves a spot in the team ahead of Liam Scales. And obviously Nathan Collins is the captain. So he's definitely going to play. Uh, and then Mark McGuinness, it's kind of a toss up between him and Jake on, on the bench. Like they could come off the bench in the second half, I believe. But um, just in terms of like Smollett's again, scored against Spurs, uh, done well as well for the second goal. Not really going to call that an assist, but he had a, a big goal involvement there. Um, Evan Ferguson was back on the score sheet for uh, Brighton there recently. And Tom Cannon's going well for Stoke as well. Finn is as. Uh, Jason Knight had a bit of a, a, a good uh, upturn in form as well over the last couple of months. So there's some players there that are that are going well. And Quivian's playing unbelievable for Liverpool. And Mark Travers at Bournemouth as well. And that, that's probably another one I'll, I'll come to you after about is Travers. And does he deserve an opportunity? But I'll, I'll kind of ask you about the the forward players midfielders uh, and how you're kind of feeling because i i I just have a bit of an air of uh positivity about this team now yeah i mean i've spoke about in the past but i'm a huge sammy smoddix fan and really just want to see him kick on for ireland and get a couple of goals same obviously with evan ferguson uh being a bowls fan seeing him grow i played against him all the way up through the years and uh to see him actually break through and become like semi superstar almost and I just want to see him kind of get back to that level that he was at maybe a year or two ago. And, you know, it was a great goal he scored there the other week and hopefully that, you know, is the start of something uh, this season. Uh, I, I'm i hoping that him and Smolix over the next, you know, couple of campaigns under Hamer will form this sort of partnership that we're looking for. Tom Cannon and, you know, Troy Parra have that competition in behind them, which is can't be anything other than a good thing to push them on and, uh, you know, make sure that they're performing to the standard that we want from them. Uh, to touch on Tom Cameron and uh, Andy Moore, and, uh, both playing really well at Stoke this season and uh, have d- are definitely knocking on the door to get into this team. But I do think Smoddix and Ferguson are probably, uh, sounds stupid to say with Evan Ferguson, but are the more experienced player at that level. Um, and I'd be far more comfortable seeing both of them play. You touched on Finn Azaz. It's a little bit difficult to see where he fits in into this team. Uh, if anything, it would be instead of Smodix, but I just I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be in favour of that really. Okay. Um. Just on the goalkeeper one, obviously you're you're a goalkeeper yourself. So, uh, just how many goals did Evan Ferguson score on you over the years? It's got to be more than a thousand at this stage. Like it's it's been that long. <laughs> it's it's up there. To be honest, he, he scored quite a few on me in his time at uh, Kevin's. Yeah, I tell you, feel a lot better when you see Premier League goalkeepers oh, not definitely. saving shots. Absolutely. Uh, but um, no, the um. Travers and Keller, like Travers has had issues with uh, the Serbia game. He came in for that game and we had no real goal- goalies at that point. So I'm just th- like, is it for a chance, t- the fact that he's been shown in the Premier League with Bournemouth, like he played in goal against Man City and they beat Man City. Uh, and he played against Aston Villa as well. They got a last minute equaliser in that game, but he was outstanding. Uh, conceded a goal in that game but he's he's been doing really well and I feel like he really deserves a chance and he's just been so unlucky that obviously Bazuna and Kelleher have done really well but Kelleher's in such good form with Liverpool but also at the same time Hamer said that he's talking about experimenting so would you be surprised if you saw the team land tomorrow and Travers started above Kelleher and like just I want to get from a goalkeeper's perspective your, your thoughts on both and you know does he deserve a chance I think it's hard to see him getting in ahead of Keller at the moment. I really like Travers as a keeper, and you mentioned them couple of games that he's played uh, recently, and he's performed really well in them. Touched on the Serbia game. I thought he was really unfairly treated back then. I thought he made kind of one error and is all of a sudden bombed out of the squad. People kind of forget that before Kelleher and Bazunu came along, he was kind of next in line to take over that sort of number one jersey. Training with Randolph, yeah. Yeah, and it, it looked like he was you know ready-made to slot into that position. Uh makes a pretty look a bad error but it happens you know all over the pitch you've seen nathan collins uh you know make a bad error in the last campaign and you know that's just the nature of the difference between an outfield player and a goalkeeper you make one mistake and it leads to a goal um so i, I was i was very disappointed back then at the time when uh that happened with travers having said that he has come back he's you know sort of turbulent time with bournemouth up and down but has you know found his way now in the premier league and is performing really well He's just really unlucky at this time that we have Cueven Kelleher in front of him, who is like performing at, I don't think it's unfair to say, a world-class level. Like, I, if Alisson, you know, 
doesn't come back for the rest of the season, which he is obviously going to, if he didn't, I think Liverpool would be fine with Kelleher for the rest of the season and would be more than able to put together a sort of title charge with him in goal. And so I think from Mark, Mark Travers' point of view, he's just really unlucky that we're at actually a really good phase for Irish goalkeepers at the moment. Uh, Kelleher in front of him, obviously. Yeah, I think he's the most unlucky player ever. Yeah. He's like, do you remember when Shea Given played in goal for Newcastle and had Steve Harper? who was a good goalkeeper. He actually looked a bit like him as well, but it was like that where yeah. he, he... Or Dean Coyley behind Shea Given. That's actually probably more more accurate. Dean Coyley was unbelievable for West Brom in the Premier League. I think Charlton as well. But uh, she just couldn't get in ahead of Shea Given. And it's a bit like that with Travers, but he's two keepers ahead of him. And I think... I, I, I really like him. I, I hope he leaves Bournemouth because he doesn't seem to be very well respected there uh, as a player. Like he, he, I think he was taken out the weekend there after being like doing really well for the club. Uh, and they were getting results there and then all of a sudden he's just taken back out like I think it's somewhere like Celtic I'm thinking like Fraser Forster type signing for Celtic I think that could be cool or not cool good for him and I think that uh, he could really excel there I think the fans would get behind him he's obviously scales there Adam Ida. I'm not trying to get all the Irish players there but you think of the European Knights and how good that would be for Travis he could make forge a really good kind of first team career because like Schmeichel's not going to play on forever I'd say he's got one more season, a bit like Joe Hart. And I think then, get in Travers, he's a young goalkeeper. Like, he's very young for goalkeeper's terms. Like, he, he would have, you know, 10 years plus there if he went there. Uh, I'm not saying Celtic can afford him or anything like that, but I think it's it's a move that he could be looking towards uh, in the future. That's just me kind of putting a bit of, um, what's the word I'm looking for there? It's, it's, it's escaping me at the moment. He could go up there and, as you say, play for another 10 years, win a ton of trophies and be a really prominent goalkeeper as you say Schmeichel probably only has at least you know a year if not two left up there speculation and was the word as well yeah yeah and a couple of Irish players up there already it would be a very good move for him I'd love to see that yeah well look we, 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 we'll hopefully see him move Um, just looking here at one of the players in the Finland squad Daniel O'Shocknessy <laughs> uh, 30 year old playing for H uh, Helsinki 22 games he uh, played left back uh, he might um, but I'm just looking at the squad like yeah, there's nobody in that squad there again there's Pukki there's uh, Pojan Palo who scored the goal but he was gifted that by uh, Nathan Collins uh, Pukki Kamara Glenn Kamara and then their goalkeeper obviously plays for uh, uh, Leverkusen and he's nearly on 100 caps now he's on 96 caps there at, that's on Wikipedia though um, so like there's nothing to really fear in my opinion of of these again like there's no one there that stands out and you're kind of going wow obviously they've got uh pookie who can score goals for them and he still looked quite good when he played us that in that game as well potion palo he looks decent as well but there's no one really i I'm, I'm looking at this as this should be a home win in my opinion it should be another three points on the board and i think we shouldn't have to leave it so dramatic uh, look, I know it's international football and every team are, are good these days, but I think we've enough with players in form. I think we've enough to get us over the line this game. Yeah, definitely. Uh, mentioned Pookie. He's obviously been a great player in the past, uh, proven goal scorer in the Premier League. Did perform well against Ireland, I think, but uh, we looked at his stats the last campaign. He's in the MLS now, not exactly tearing it up. Uh, Kamara, decent player. Poy and Palo, decent player. Very good goalkeeper, but... Aside from that, I think we have we're probably better in every area of the pitch. Uh, I think there's no excuses going into this. There's you'd expect nothing less than three points, especially being at home. But I do agree, we would like to see a better performance and maybe a more dominant result. But you know, at the end of the day, the result is the main thing. All I'm looking for is three points. There's no excuses other than that. Yeah, I mean, I'm just like they've lost their last four games. They're the whipping boys of the group, and it's nice to not be that. Uh, for the first time so uh, that's what I'm saying again we should be we should be looking to beat them uh, I'm just looking at the stats here they've only scored two goals as well in the last four games obviously one of them was against us but again I go back to they were gifted that um, their possessions 41.5% um, yeah I mean there's not a whole lot there to, to be worried if I'm Hamer Halgrimson or the Irish team to be honest with you so yeah, look, uh, I suppose it just you were talking there earlier off air, just kind of about the how you'd see maybe us lining up just to finish off and then maybe we'll get into the score predictions just to, to finish off. 
But yeah, this is it. It's going to be difficult kind of with the injuries that we have to fit them all into the 4-4-2 that he played last time around. Uh, O'Shea being out is difficult. Uh, I, I probably would. Who You mentioned Matt Doherty coming back in. I, I probably I wouldn't be surprised. It's the if only one happens. that makes sense if O'Shea is not there. Yeah, it, it, is, it is the only one that makes sense. And look, it, it'll do for one game. I, I'm not trying to you know, pile on Matt Doherty. I, I'm not delighted to see him back into the starting 11, but uh, needs must and uh, uh, Hamer Hogginson said that he's he's not completely out of this squad it, it's down to performances and he's looking to test other players out but it's just a situation we find ourselves in so yeah I'd say Matt Doherty the other question marks we're obviously looking at left back and the wing positions I think Odell that comes in uh, at left back and then the two wingers I think uh, Johnson and probably Smoddix in the end if if Festy does have a, a niggle um, Cullen and Knight in the middle uh, sorry, I didn't say, but Collins and Scales at the back and Kelleher and goal for me. And then up front, probably Parrot and Ferguson. I think that's that's the starting lineup I would go with. Yeah, I'm not going to give away mine because I obviously do have a separate one on the starting 11 show, so I won't uh, I won't give away who I would like to see. That's how yeah. who you think he's going to go with rather than what you'd actually like to see? Realistic, but that's that's how I would see our okay. strongest 11 being. Fair enough. Um, I, I mean, I don't see it wrong with it. Um. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. I, did you have Finn as in that team? No, no, I didn't have him to start. I think I think he'll start him yeah. um, instead of Knight, or potentially Knight on the right. Okay, yeah. Uh, I, that's how he would. I think he'll line up. But again, he's hard man to read so far. Yeah. But I like that about him. There's an yeah. element of surprise, um, which I think is good. But uh, no, look, I, I I'll j- just jump straight to the uh, to the score prediction. I think uh, another two one win. Um, I'd be happy with a two. I would be happy with a one nil, but I think uh, a two one win. I'd like to see uh, Evan Ferguson get on the score sheet, and then maybe Finn as as. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna go two nil. I think that we have enough firepower going forward to score goals. Uh, Ferguson and Smodic are go with. Um, and then just last campaign, I thought we looked very good defensively against against Greece and Finland, but it it was just individual errors that led to goals. And I think if we can cut that out of the out of the team, we are actually really solid at the back with Kelleher and Goal, who's been brilliant this season. So I'd be confident to go at a 2 0 win. Yeah, okay. Going for the clean sheet. Um, we just don't need any players giving up any goals, and hopefully that won't be the case. But uh, that's been all from us. Um, again, check out Magic Door Studios, uh, where we are recording from as well. Uh, that's been the match preview. We're going to have more content rolling out over the next couple of days. So make sure you're following us on all social media. And uh, yeah, um, we are over and now. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like the video. And we'll speak to you all during the week. Take care.